Hello guys, how you all doing? Nage Shapu. Uh, today, in the last video that I made, yeah, analysis and the trading setups on NASDAQ for this coming week, one of you asked me to sort of include the currencies when I do the analysis, you know, I shouldn't just focus on NASDAQ. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So today, the two videos that I'm going to put up today, they're just going to be uh, introducing the currencies in into our you know the, the the style that we've been using to analyze i just want to show you that even if i analyze currencies i'm not going to change my approach i'll still be approaching it the same way but before uh, he gave me gave me the, the currencies that he wanted me to go over that but before i do that i just wanted us to talk about you know how it's what's, what's the difference between currencies and nasdaq or stocks my one so these are the things that you need to keep in mind i'm gonna put currencies this side yeah. and then here we can put stocks or and uh, in this is yeah. so goodness they get maybe facebook stock uh, tesla whatever so stocks and indices so when it comes to currencies remember currencies you are basically uh, comparing um, the currency of one one uh, uh, again one country against the other one so in this case, in this side, you need to understand that the price, the price, it always have, it all, it's, it will always be do this, it will always do this. If you look at bigger, bigger time frames, it will always have a scale like that. It will hardly go above that. So for it to go to this side, or for it to go to this side, something very, very, very big must happen in one of the two currencies, one of the two, uh, again, one of the two. If let's say we are looking at usd za ne? for us to break to that side the dollar must be in america there must be something that they are doing that you know it, it improves the strength of their dollar or in south africa maybe we are moving to junk status or something big is happening then it can cause weakness in the dollar and then you see the price moving outside of the normal range but if there's nothing happening we'll just move moving like this moving like that so that's those are the currencies but when you're talking about stocks it's a different story stocks in general or current uh, indices in general they're going up for them to drop and have a massive drop there must be something fundamentally as well fundamentally so maybe the ceo stepped down or that company is not doing well and so here you need to understand or there's something that is happening around the world so things like when we had the covid outbreak because remember they were the lockdowns some of the companies they couldn't operate so obviously their stocks is not going to continue rising that's when they took a knock why one so there must be something that is happening otherwise we will just have a normal pullback and up but in general the stocks and indices they're moving up but in currencies it's a different story they are doing this for them to change and go in the other side, we need something really, really big to happen. Why, man? Marine stocks generally we're moving up. So now another difference between the two currencies and stocks is currencies they are cheaper to trade, meaning they have got small, uh, they've got smaller, uh, they've got small pip value, if I can put it like that. So here your stop loss is not going to be a huge amount. But remember, the currencies, they are not the same. In general, currencies, they are cheaper to trade compared to stocks. Stocks, they are expensive. So as much as they are expensive, it means if it moves in your direction, you stand a chance to make uh, a lot of money. If you do think back to the to the trade that we took last week, yeah, NASDAQ, NASDAQ Aggregate Index, uh, it, I used 0 0.01. 0 0.01 but i still managed to make five thousand ne? so in this side if you use 0 0.01 and trade currencies i doubt i don't, I don't know how many how long it's going to take you to make five thousand maybe you need to have like maybe five or six or seven long candlesticks on day for you to make five thousand of which when we're trading nasdaq it didn't even take us that long maybe seven hours and the movement was on h1 so imagine so that's what i'm saying this one's the expensive so your stop loss this side when you hit your stop loss you can easily lose a thousand thousand rand why well, mara in this case this side is a different story you'll be losing less mara even when it moves in your direction you won't make as much as someone 
like a we can have a similar size candlestick on both sides the one that traded stocks can make 10k or let's say let's make it five they can make 5k at that time when you're only making uh, maybe 1k yeah maybe 1k or 800 bucks that person made 5,000 from the same uh, candlestick they are trading uh, the stock or when you're trading currencies so that's another thing that you need to understand or the currencies and stocks they are not the same Mara, the similarities they all have area of support and area of resistance they all have a trend they'll be moving up or down so that's why when we're analyzing them we analyze them the same way so the, the very same way i've been analyzing nasdaq is the same way i'll be analyzing stocks Mara, remember for you to trade stocks you need a big account because like i said you can easily lose a thousand not dollars but you can easily lose thousand rands with your stop loss on, on nasdaq or stocks right? Mara, those ones if you catch a nice entry if let's say the price is moving down, remember I've been preaching about that that area of support on, on monthly. Saying I wish the price can get there. So if you can get a nice entry inside that area of support and you know that this thing in general is always going up. And then you get a nice entry and then it moves up with you. You have a chance of making a lot of money, especially if it's moving from a higher time frame area of support. That's if you're strong enough to hold it through. The, the the pullbacks right? so remember how not a pullback for as long as the pullback does not go below your the support that you formed up there when i stop loss you pull below the support then maybe look for another entry for as long as the price doesn't come to the other side you are still very much safe and the price still has a chance to go up right around so those are the the similarities study the, the stocks the currencies so for now i will here in this video, I just wanted to you to understand how to see what are the stocks. Remember things like Nasdaq. I'm not sure if you already knew this. Nasdaq is more like a stock, ne? It's an sort of like an American stock that it is sort of a summary of hundred US uh, tech companies: oh, Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft. You name it, all of them. You can just go and check the list of all the uh, the, the the companies that are fall under Nasdaq. So it's like a summary of how they are they are doing. So, and then you have that other one which is a Dow Jones or US thirty, US thirty. Né? So this one is a summary of what thirty companies. And I think these thirty companies they are also part of what of Nasdaq. So Nasdaq is sort of US thirty plus seventy other companies right one so when the u when the when the us that that is going down it means one of maybe one of the companies that that are included in the us 30 stock is not doing well and then the the, the, the us that will be going down but remember that company automatically it is also what included in nasdaq so you most likely gonna see the nasdaq also pointing in the the same direction but sometimes you can see nasdaq you know maybe still playing like this and then us that no, let's let's do it this way. Yeah, sometimes you can find US thirty doing this and then Nasdaq doing that, or sometimes US thirty doing this and Nasdaq doing that, and then you ask yourself for how. Remember, in here you have got this is US thirty, this is US thirty again. So let's say here, one of the companies in the US thirty is not doing is not doing well. Then this goes down, and then remember the same company it also falls under Nasdaq right but there's still 70 more in nasdaq so what if that those 70 more that are not in us state they are doing proper then they overcome the small impact of this company that is not doing well here hence we are having this thing going up right one and then here in the second scenario us state can go up but nasdaq can sort of stall or move sideways or sort of pull back and then it means the companies that are in the us state they are doing well Mara, now the same company is here. Then you ask yourself, why is it not pushing the stock up? But remember, this side, there's still 70 other companies. What if they're not doing well? Then their impact overweighs the impact of that one company that is pushing the US state up. Then you end up having NASDAQ not going up. I hope this makes sense. So, but in generally, US state and US 100 in general, they'll be moving in the same direction, making more or less. Not the same movements, but you can see that there's some related relationship and they are sort of related one way or the other. Why one? But in currencies, we are just doing this.
for us to go to the other side something must happen in in stocks or in the seas we're doing this and then maybe we can pause in and but for us to fall like this we need a yes, proper proper reason then let's go to the chart we look at one of the currencies and then i'll show you why i'm saying it moves like this and then we go to the stocks and then we just check the trend we're not analyzing i'll make a video where i'll be analyzing the currencies that the guy gave me in the comment section so here i just wanted to show you you know in general how do the stocks move and how do uh, currencies move so let's go to the chart all right and then here is our nasdaq you can see that this thing in general is going up like this you can see that and then here it took a fall i'll tell you what happened today and then if we zoom in a bit you can see i just can't remember was it yeah this one i forgot what happened in 2017 but here this was covid 19. so here if you can just check i'm sure there was something and then this one i think it's due to the conflict between uh, ukraine and russia because remember those stocks about microsoft about twitter about stuff like that they were closed in the russia so it means they took a knock they are not doing well now because they lost they lost uh working the customers in the russian market whatever so that's when it did this so that's what i'm saying in general the us ATM stuff stuff like that they will be moving up so they can fall until they come up with the plan to mitigate that loss and then now you see it recovery you can see we formed a pin bar and then just above this then we can still continue and recover all that loss so those that's how stocks generally they move so they don't have like a range they always break the highs they always go up stocks whatever well, up until something big happens so this was covid this is the russia ukraine war if i can put it like that so let's check the us 30 on the on the monthly chart then you'll see it moves more or less the same as us 100 like i was saying all right here is your us 30 us 30 the one we we're looking at before was nasdaq so this one is called dow jones which is us 30 nasdaq is us 100 like i said 30 companies decide 100 companies in nasdaq so this was in 2019 2020 beginning of 2020 which was COVID, the same effect as what we saw on nasdaq and then we have uh what's this we have uh bargain the russia ukraine uh conflict so you can see this side is not as long as nasdaq but it's sort of the same shape and you can find that the, the reason why nasdaq went deeper than this one is because of what there's still 70 other companies so maybe those ones were hit more by the the sanctions and the bans of you know the, the, that relationship between uh, russia and the west whatever one but in general you can see they are all going it's all going up up until something big happens then that's when it will take a fall and when it falls one thing that you need to know to go ring, look at how, how long it takes it to move up you can see it takes it i got this is one month one candlestick but look at what happened in two months where well, one so it's easy for a company to fall and difficult for it to rise that's what it means basically mara you can see the similarities so even this side we dropped up until this then we can expect it to you know start looking for buying opportunities everything is pointing up maybe they are recovering it's just that i haven't been following the news mara if you look around the fundamentals you find that there was something positive that they released and stuff like that and then we hit the the support and then now we're going up but you can see that in general the stocks and the indices they are going up now let's go to currencies i'll show you why i'm saying the currencies they sort of move in a wave you know in a sideways move on a bigger scale up until we have something really happening sometimes i might not remember of what happened in there was a time where there was a recession i think it was 2007 was it seven yeah then you find the market tumbling and stuff so let's just go to the currencies and see the structure that side yes so we're gonna look at the us uh, dollar against the euro so you can see i don't know what was happening in 2001 so i won't have much information there by one so you can see that it the dollar managed to gain again i mean the euro managed to gain again the dollar like that so if this was if this was the stocks or indices we will know that the price is never coming back here it's not coming back here but because of the currency if the dollar manages to become stronger it will fight back and push the price down 
and then if it loses strength again the price will go up and then come back down that's what i mean in currents in, in stocks if the stock moves like this on monthly it's not coming back here forget about it it's not coming back here it's not we're not coming back there we can fall and then recover again but here we are not coming market currencies we can still go back to the original the origin of the move by one so in this case you can see it moves down so this is our this is our area of of the of support or demand so this is where you must go and buy and then when it gets to this this is your area of what resistance so you must go and trade this trade this up until one of them gives in i don't know what it is going to take in terms of the fundamentals for the price to break out of that range but you can see that has been the range since what since Vuma 2013 that has been the range we've been moving like this in stocks we cannot have something like this from 2013 moving like this we'll be doing this and then maybe pausing and then take off again so that's the differences between these stocks and currencies matter the way we analyze is still the same we will still have our area of support we still have our area of resistance ne? i hope this video is gonna help you a lot and then you must watch this one first before you go to the actual video that i'm gonna post it next after this one where i'll be talking about where i'll sort of be analyzing the the, the currencies that the guy gave me my man here i just wanted you to understand what happens to what's the difference between currencies and stocks all right so i'm gonna end it here guys and then i'll start recording the one where i'll be analyzing uh, the, the the currencies that, that the guy gave me all right cheers guys don't forget to subscribe there i'll see you in the next video yeah the analysis sharp